Hey guys, what's up? Serena Pia here from thriftdiving.com and today, guess what we're gonna do? We are painting this beautiful piece of furniture. This vintage vanity I got from a thrift store for literally under $10. It was like $9 and some change. And I struggled with whether or not I was gonna paint this because I typically don't really like to paint awesome, beautiful wood because I know how gorgeous it is. So today we're gonna ruin this vintage vanity. <laughs> I'm totally kidding you. I'm not going to ruin it. I promise you. But if you look at the top, it had a lot of scratches. It needed some help. And I kept, you know, debating, do I strip it and stain it? Do I paint it? I didn't know. It had this broken trim. That was a concern because I didn't want to have to go and find a replacement for it. Plus it was a little bumpy and, you know, two different textures. I just didn't think it was going to work. But it was a great piece and I just couldn't wait to get started on it. The drawers were in pretty good condition, but that top one there to the left did have some, I think it was like candle wax or something. But overall, this was a great piece and I knew it was gonna look really good. You'll see that there are some scratches. Now they don't appear to be very deep scratches, which is good, but I'm gonna be refinishing this anyway, stripping this with some sandpaper. I've got three grits of sandpaper that I'm gonna use. Uh, I'm gonna use the 80 grit to remove a lot of the finish here on the vanity. And then we will move down to a 150 grit to kind of smooth that out. And then we'll probably finish it off with the 220 grit sandpaper. Now, if for this makeover, I decided to use my orbital sander to get the existing finish off of the vanity. Now I could have used chemical stripper and I will later on, which you'll see, but I decided to use this. It's a little faster, a little less messy, but make sure that you wear a dusk mask. Now you'll notice that I'm going kind of slow here, right? Revealing this beautiful wood. If you go any faster than say one inch per second, what happens is that you get these swirly marks on your wood and you don't even realize it until you go to apply stain or some kind of finish and you're like, why is my wood looking like there's swirls, these pigtails? So go slowly, make sure that you're using the appropriate sandpaper. And if you need some help with this, click the link below on how to refinish furniture, how to strip furniture. You'll get some good tips. Okay, so now I've removed all of the finish from the top with the 80 grit sandpaper and there was one spot that I was not able to get. It looks like there was some oil down in there and I think I'm just going to have to like paint a flower or do something to disguise that area. Um, but everything else looks pretty good. Now we're ready to move to the 150 grit sandpaper and the reason we do that is because right now there's probably some swirly marks and some scratches, things that we can't see that the 80 grit sandpaper made. So now we're gonna do the 150 and it'll smooth things out. And we might do the 220, but I don't think we'll need to do the 220. I think 150 will be good and then we'll be ready to move on to the next part, which is the trim here. So for the final sanding, I am going to use some 220 grit, very fine sandpaper, and I'm just going to do this by hand. So we are going to use a little bit of paint stripper, but we're going to do it right along the edge. I could have used it on top, but I just really didn't want to. I would have had to have sanded anyway, so this looks good. Now we just have to get this stain off of the top. When I'm stripping furniture, I love to use the environmentally friendly stuff, but you still have to make sure that you wear gloves, so that's why I got my gloves on. And if you want the list for the materials, go down to the blog post, you'll find them all there. But I used the paintbrush, applied it, and I let it set on there for about, maybe about an hour. I really think you only need about 15, 20 minutes. It works pretty quickly, but if you need to go and get something to eat or just kind of step away for a little bit, you can. But I didn't put any on the top because that was already done. And then I used one of those metal wire brushes. You can get them for like a pack of three for like five bucks and just use that to loosen some of the existing finish and then wiped it away. And then once I cleaned all the existing finish off, I used some afterwash to clean away the residue and then it was time to let it dry. In the meantime, while this is drying, we're gonna figure out how to fix this. We're also gonna clean it. We've got some vinegar and water because we do not wanna put paint on something that is dirty because the paint won't stick. So we're gonna remove these drawers, clean the inside of the drawers, check the inside, make sure there's no bugs or anything like that and figure out how in the world we're gonna fix this piece of broken trim. Oh, that'll be really interesting to see what I do. <laughs> I have no idea. This is the part that's really gross when it comes to furniture that's like old because then you have to like clean it out and you, you don't know what you're going to find in it. Thankfully nothing bad but it is still pretty gross. 
And I was able to use a small detail sander to get that area that I was really afraid that I would mess up with a sander, but it worked pretty good. Next up, it was time to mix some paint. So of course we're going for pink. Yep, that's the color that I ended up going with. And here's what's funny. I am such a Tom girl. I grew up wanting to be a boy. I grew up hanging with the boys. I never had a pink bedroom. I never had pink furniture. I never wanted to be a princess, but somehow there's something about pink and like those soft baby colors that just speak to me. I just love it. So by the end of the mixing, I came up with this pink that looks more pink in the bucket, but it goes on very light. And so I removed the rest of the hardware and it was time to paint. So I am gonna take this piece of furniture and turn it over so that I can paint the underside of it. It's gonna be much easier to do that than it is to, you know, be turning upside down trying to paint something. You're gonna look great and have a new lease on life. And then someone will come along and strip you in 20 years and wonder why the heck were all these people painting furniture? So here's a little tip for you. If you ever, ever have a doubt about painting a piece of wood furniture, you can always do a coat of shellac over the body of the, the wood and then paint it. That way, if you ever decide you wanna strip it later, you will have not really gotten into the wood. You will be able to easily strip it because of that protective coat. For me, I personally don't care. I'm not gonna be stripping this. Somebody else will 20, 20 years later. So we're just gonna paint it. And here's another little tip. Use a quarter inch nap roller in order to paint furniture. Seriously, using a brush takes so long and you get better results and you don't have those annoying little brush strokes. So this is interesting. This says January, 1980. Oh yeah. So we are not definitely painting an antique. And when you paint furniture, it will look like this. You see how the, the wood is coming through. That's because we didn't sand, we didn't prime. With chalk paint, you don't have to, but keep in mind that your first coat will look kind of spotty and kind of like, ugh, what did I do wrong? You didn't do anything wrong. It just means you gotta put another two coats, you know, another one or two coats on to get full coverage. Well, guess what? I figured out how to fix the trim. Now, this is not a sponsored post or video at all. This is just me using a product that a brand had sent to me. But, you know, as bloggers, we get a lot of products where companies want us to try things out. Well, this company had sent this moldable glue about a year ago, and I just never used it. And finally, this project came along, and I thought, well, let me see. And it even was expired. It said February 2018. I'm like, well, maybe it'll still work. So I tried to recreate the look of the trim. You can see it's not exact, but overall it looked pretty good and I let it dry for 24 hours. And then I used a primer over top of it because it says on their website, you cannot paint it because it's like a silicone, right? Well, if you spray it with some primer, some oil-based primer, guess what? You can paint it. <laughs> and even though it doesn't look, you know, like 100%, that's a pretty good fix. Okay guys, so we are done painting this. I've put two coats. Now we're going to put a little bit of shellac on the top. We're just gonna leave this clear. I think we're gonna leave it clear because I really just want to put a little bit of color, but I don't want to like overpower it. And then we're gonna do the knobs or the, the poles in a nice gold color. Oh, I think it's gonna look really, really good. So the reason why I decided to do the sanding sealer is because I like that it still gave it a little bit of color and then I can still add, maybe sand this down, get it really smooth, and then I'll still be able to add like a nice uh, high performance top coat. I'll probably use the general finishes, water-based top. I like that you can see kind of like the natural grain of this top. It looks really, really nice. I'm glad I didn't put a stain on it. And once the sanding sealer dried, I used 220 grit sandpaper to smooth it out and then added two coats of top coat. Be sure to check out the materials list in order to find out which materials I use for this project. So while the top is drying, we're gonna put a little bit of this rub and buff on these handles. And what you'll notice is that it's totally taking away all this nasty, like old color. So you might wanna check out my other video where I actually had showed you some of the ways that you can use rub and buff but this is one of the ways you can use it on your hardware and this helps you to save money from not having to buy new hardware plus when you're doing pieces like this like a french provincial dresser or buffet or something like that you typically want to keep the same hardware and i have to tell you finding this kind of uh, 
French provincial hardware, it's very difficult. You could probably find it on Etsy, but it can be very expensive. So you might want to reuse what you have. And you might want to disguise what you don't have. <laughs> so I didn't have two knobs here for these holes, so I put some wood filler, let it dry, and then sanded it smooth and painted it. Now the inside, this is where I really figured like, ah, I guess I gotta do something to the inside because it was ugly. It was just brown and some of the stripping gel had gotten underneath of it. And my oldest son said, mommy, you have to go big or go home. And I decided, you know what? I guess I'm gonna go big. So I sanded this down, did the same treatment that I did to the top so that it looked uniform when you lifted it up. Now I decided that I was gonna go even bigger. And so I did a patchwork type pattern inside of the drawers. And I was not planning to do this. It was totally spur of the moment, but it just works. And so I won't go into the step-by-step. -step. I will put another video together to show you exactly how to do it and to get good results when you're lining your drawers with a uh, paper, scrapbook paper, but it looks really good. I love it. So let's take another look at where this vanity started. It was scratched, it was brown, it was horrible, but it looks amazing now. That top is so satiny smooth. I'm really glad I went in that direction to keep it natural. And the scrapbook paper was a really like fun touch of whimsy that I don't normally do. And I know some people may say, well, it's juvenile and the color's not for me, but considering that this thing was $10 at the thrift store and I got to flex my creative muscle and salvage another piece of furniture from a potential landfill I think that's a big win and I can use this for a vanity I can use it for crafting anything and it looks good I'd still need to add a little bit of top coat to the paint I'm gonna let it cure for another week or so and then add maybe one or two coats of top coat to protect it all right guys so we are done with this makeover and I have to admit I freaking love this I really wasn't sure at first what I was gonna do with this but after putting some paint on this, stripping the top, and just leaving the top natural with a little bit of shellac. I love the color, it just looks amazing. So usually what happens with furniture makeovers is that you don't know exactly what's gonna happen. And with this project, I had no idea that I was going to line the drawers with scrapbook paper, but it looks really, really good. Ah, I love it. So I'm keeping this. I don't know where I'm gonna put it yet with a lot of my projects. I just don't know where I put it and I just stash it somewhere. So eventually you will see this somewhere in my house and I will share that with you. Go back to thriftdiving.com, enter your name and email, subscribe and I'll send you five eBooks and printables and be sure to hit that little bell and subscribe. I will see you next video and you can always go back to Thrift Diving or down to the description and get the materials list for this baby. She's pretty, isn't she? She's so pretty.